Aloha, welcome to another episode of the Hawaii Vacation Connection. I'm Bruce Fisher. How's it going? You got Lanai? Thanks for tuning in. We got a great podcast for you today, sponsored by Hawaii Aloha Travel. We're in Hawaii, Hawaii's experts. Also, Star Advertiser and Hawaii.com. We got a great show for you today. We're going to be talking about food in Hawaii, one of your favorite topics. Yes. And some suggestions for things for you to eat. We also yes. have tons of people have been on the Facebook page uh-huh. posting food that they think they want to eat or that their favorite foods are. So I want you to comment on some of that. You right. got to be honest. You got to be yeah, honest. Yeah, I'm always honest. And that's right. So we're going to be talking about that. And also we're going to be talking about how to get around in the islands once you come here. Yes. You know, sometimes you may want to rent a car and there's things you need to know when you're traveling in between the islands because we have some stories of people who thought hawaii was this big and they didn't rent a car and they were on the opposite side of the island i know I remember mean, so that many story stories. yeah oh a couple, my gosh couple good ones all right so you're coming to hawaii and one of the things you have to do is eat right it's part of the culture i think anywhere you travel in the world what i do is i always look at where i'm going to go and eat and you know people always ask me this question when how do you find your places to eat and you can you just ask a local yeah that's it. The bottom line, you ask a local, you ask the doorman, you ask the front desk person. Um, you know, people will say, well, why don't you use like TripAdvisor? Well, TripAdvisor is reviews from people who don't live here. Usually. Usually they are. Right. And it's usually a chain. And in Hawaii, we want to support our local businesses. We yeah. want to support our local restaurants. And we have so many iconic restaurants to Hawaii. You can't miss them. Well, you know, really, you've kind of made a career out of it, haven't you? I mean, I have, you really, know, yeah. th- think about it. Just in the last six years, really, yeah. you've really kind of morphed into somebody. I, I never call you a foodie because you don't like that term, right? Yeah, you I know? don't even know what that means. Well, I know. So what are <laughs> you? You know, you, basically, you've really embraced the whole food culture. I just love to eat, and I <laughs> and I think the reason my success has been because I've supported local businesses. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah. It's not me. I, right. I, I think it's local business. You support the local businesses and then they support you kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. And then people gravitate to that. And then, you know, like if you were to go to, I always give this example. If I'm going to go to China, I'm going to go eat good Chinese food. If I'm going to go to Mexico, I'm going to go eat good Mexican food, right? So I'm going to find the person who knows where that good stuff is. And it's usually a local. Well, you're one of those people. You're Hopefully. a local. So what, what should we start with? What, what do you think we should start with when we're telling people about what to eat when they're here? There's calibers. There's stages, I think. If you want to go five-star, we have some amazing five-star restaurants. Um, if you want to go right in the middle, uh, hole in the walls, I would always start with the hole in the walls because I think that's the most authentic. Mm-hmm. That's the most real. That's the most flavorful, most iconic, especially for Hawaii. We got restaurants here. 50 60 70 years old and there's a reason why they stay open that long right just they're like good you any know? business and, yeah they, i mean where's your favorite when you when you want to get a good local plate lunch first of all a plate lunch it started they, they say in the 50s uh in the 50s late 40s a plate lunch consisted of two scoops of rice mac salad and then chicken fish beef or whatever the hot meal that you yeah double carbs pretty much what's your favorite plate well lunch i have spot? to say you know knowing you has really kind of influenced me a lot yeah. so i love jane's fountain those kinds of places yes. you know all the places you've suggested you jane's know, fountain ethel's grill i mean you know jane's fountain is uh 80 years old over 80 years old now it's it a looks hole it. in the wall it looks it too. Yeah. I mean, and, and we don't want them to change it which is kind of cool yeah, yeah yeah so those kinds of things and you know being influenced by just doing this this podcast with you all these years you know oh. i've been influenced by that um you know my you know a go-to is always hawaii in you know highway, highway in, in highway yeah. in is always a go-to good, hi, good hawaii Hawaiian food. Yeah. That's so, good Hawaiian food. And there's a difference. I want people to understand. There's a difference between Hawaiian food and Hawaiian style food. Hawaiian food was very simple and basic. It was fish, poi, and some fruits and vegetables. Mm-hmm. That was it. And then you had the Chinese who came to Hawaii in the 1790s who introduced us to rice and noodles. Right. So that's really when it changed. And then the Japanese in 1806, they brought us their foods and then Filipinos and Koreans. So you have Hawaiian style food, which started during the plantations. And then you have Hawaiian food, which is the basics, fish and poi. Um, and when you talk about Highway Inn, they've been open since 1947 and second generation now, that's authentic Hawaiian food. You have Helena's, which is a James Beard Award winner. Doesn't get more authentic and than these that. Are, they, I would say they're hall on the walls. Oh, but, they but, are. But, you know, they're, 
you know, they've matured kind of yeah. in a way. But they are hole in the walls. When when you say hole in the wall, there's, you know, there's not more than 10 parking stalls and there's probably 10 tables. Yeah. You know, and exactly. it's family owned. It, there's no there's no chain. And they have um, their specialties. They do. They you really know, they do. They each have their own way of doing it. Like, you know, when you think of loco mocha, there's a million ways to make loco mocha. Yeah. But I could go in all these places and the gravy is different in every one. Yes. Right? It's and all about the key. gravy, right? And it's gravy like every is time and it's delicious. Yeah. yeah. So. so and for those of you who don't know what a loco mocha is, loco mocha was invented by uh, some surfers on the big island. And they didn't have any money when they got out of the water. And Auntie was closing up shop and they said... What do you have left to eat? You know, I only got like a dollar. She said, I got a hamburger. I'll fry it for you and put some rice, put it on some rice and put some gravy on it. All right. So we got these comments. And they said, well, let's put eggs. Oh, that, that, I'm that's sorry. how the local yeah, that, that's how it just it was just like that. Wasn't yeah. it a group? Was, it was that baseball team, right? And there's all the stories, but it was surfers. Was it in he? Did it really? In Hilo. It, it yeah, was it was. In, it was some surfers that came yeah. up with it. Yeah, I was getting distracted here yeah. because you know we're talking about food here, and before the podcast, we put it up on our Facebook page, and we've got over 300 comments from people yeah. about what they eat. So let's see if it's uh, if they're uh, Lanai approved. Okay, so the question was, if you could eat only one thing from Hawaii right now, what would be and i mean there's just so one was there's never a bad meal anywhere in hawaii uh you you well, might find a few you know you might find a few <laughs> not deep, from hawaii though uh deep fried banana from a roadside stand that's, uh, that's that's the, called lumpia uh, the filipinos introduced that to us in the uh, late 1800s and what we do is we take banana brown sugar wrap it in rice paper and then we deep fry it yeah some yeah. of these are good uh, uh managua manapua Ma- well i think they misspelled it yeah, man, yeah, Manapua right. and poor cash. Yeah, Manapua yeah. Poor, I didn't know. Yeah, Manapua and poor cash, yeah, of course. Yeah, so Manapua is it's a, a bun, big bun. Yeah. Yeah, you might be familiar with it if you're on the mainland. If you went to a Chinese restaurant and had dim sum, it's called a bao. Um, there's two different stories for it. Uh, one story that pops up the most is it was a piece of bread, pork on top, with a mound of pork. And the Hawaiian called it Manapua, mound of pork. Pua is pig. And it was mispronounced to manapua. And whenever you eat a manapua, you always eat pork hash with it. It's just they go hand in hand. And that is like one of the five things they say you should have. When oh, you here's a great one. A Costco hot dog from YPO Warehouse. Oh, jeez. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. No. Did they really say that? Somebody really said oh, that. Oh, they were joking. Somebody, they must be really joking. Yeah. Um, pineapple. People talk a lot about pineapple. By the way, pineapples are not from Hawaii. They right. were brought over by a guy by the name of Francisco. I think it was Del Mar. Uh, Marin, and he introduced uh, pineapples, coffee, cacao, and a bunch of different other fruits that we didn't have to the king. And we took him in, and now it's a big part of our culture. But pineapples are not Hawaiian. Sorry They're to not. disappoint and all of you. And we don't really produce them for mass consumption no, anymore. No, it's just for local now. There's a lot of desserts coming in here. Uh, yeah. Hula pie at That's Kimo's. from uh, Kimo's or Duke's. Or Duke's. Yeah. Um, shave ice, of course. Shave ice is awesome. So yeah. shave ice was introduced to us by the Japanese um, they really came up with it during the Edo period in, in Japan. Edo period was before it was named Tokyo. They would take blocks of ice from Hokkaido and they would shave it and put syrup on it. It was more for the emperor. It was like a treat. And then, no, they came over and worked on the plantations and it was hot. And they said, we need some shave ice. So they would <laughs> shave the ice. And we have some amazing shave ice places here, over 50 years old. Um, Wyola Shave Ice, Matsumoto Shave Ice, Shimazu, Baldwin. Um, go and visit these hole in the walls. They're still the same as they were when my grandparents used to take Yeah, me. there's a million of them here. Yeah. All some really good. So get over to our uh, Facebook page, Hawaii Aloha Travel. Ch- uh, chime in there. We ask questions almost every other day. Yeah. Talk about stuff. And it's helped to share that stuff. We should post uh, like five places to eat yeah. shave ice five yeah. places to eat manapua let's do that yeah, let's weekly. do that now we got a deal coming up here and we also yes. going to continue on here what is the deal that we got going right so now? make sure you check out our deal uh for this podcast the uh keyword is um it's a hawaii. Uh, it's hawaii so it's its hawaii just check it up here on the screen we're going to give you uh up to 200 dollars off on your next hawaii vacation the deal includes a hundred dollar activity credit which you can use for any activity in our selection of excursions and up to a hundred dollars of any vacation package book valued at fifteen hundred dollars or more just go to our website it's hawaii-aloha.com slash promo and we'll hook it up for you yes thank you lanai of course Check it out and 
save some money. That activity credit is great. All right. So another topic that comes up a lot, you know, in, in dealing with travel and coming to Hawaii is this whole idea of how to get around in the islands and what to do when you get here. I mean, how do you get around? Yeah. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit. You know, first of all, everybody needs to understand to get to Hawaii, you really do have to fly. I mean, there's no other way. You can come here by boat. <laughs> you come right? on a cruise. Yeah. yeah, you can come here by a cruise, but really the, the most popular way for people to fly. And believe it or not, people still need to understand that to get between between the islands, the only way to do it, except for you know a couple that little ferry that's there, but yeah. generally you gotta fly between yeah. the islands. And you you catch uh, we have Hawaiian Airlines, we have Mokulele Airlines, we have Southwest now, um, and the price war has begun, especially yeah. uh, recently. Yeah. So it's pretty cheap to get island to island. Yeah, it's it's you know I figure it's any you know I, I my rule of thumb it's between sixty and a hundred bucks to get in between the islands, yeah. and you know you got to figure that out, but. When you're traveling between the islands, you got to give you got to realize that it's c- probably going to be part of a multi-island trip. Yeah. So you're going to be going to more than one island. So make sure that you have enough time to do a multi-island trip. We've talked about that before, but um, once you get to the islands, each island has their own thing going on. First of all, do you think everybody needs a car on every island? I think certain islands, Oahu, you don't need to because I think Oahu is good for Uber, Lyft, uh, that tar- type of thing. And if you're staying in Waikiki. Everything is there. I notice a lot of my guests, they'll st- if they're staying in Waikiki they'll rent a, and they're here for a week, they'll rent a car one or two days to mm-hmm. go around the island. Mm-hmm. If you're on Maui, Big Island, or Kauai, you need a rental car. Um, bus service is far and few. Um, they have shuttle service to certain things. Um, if you're going to book a tour, then you can do that. But if you want to be free, you got to rent a car. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I think that more and more so... Um, First of all, going back to Oahu, anything that you do here, transportation is included. If you're going to go to a luau, you know, a luau, you're yeah. going to get transportation, transportation to the luau. Yeah. If you're going to go, let's say, shark, uh, shark cage. Most activities. Shark. Yeah, yeah. Whereas on other islands, they, we just don't have that. And yeah. also, on, on each of the other islands, the airport is pretty far away from the centers where people stay. Yeah. So it's a long drive if you're going to get transportation. You know, very often, like in Maui, or if, you, if, you, if you're not going to rent a car, which is the only island I would say you could, might be able to get away with it. But still, to get from the airport to Kahana Everywhere is far. It's, yeah, it's yeah, like 50 minutes there, and it costs money. It's cost like, you know, it's going to yeah, be like... 100 bucks. You might as well if rent you, a car. If, you, um, if you're going from the airport in Kahului, which most big major flights fly into, and you're staying in Lahaina, you're talking about 50 minutes to an hour with traffic, you might as well rent a car. Yeah, you might as well rent a car. And by the time you spend the money on the car, it's usually a wash and you're probably going to want to drive around. Yeah. But there are some times when I get folks that really don't want to rent a car and they really do want to go to Maui. And we've arranged trips, some of our all-inclusive packages, for instance, where it does include everything. It does include the transportation. You can get away with it. Like sometimes you might have an older couple. Yeah. Or uh, just some people that just, they're not into driving around, but oh, they just, want to be on Maui. Yeah, that's you know? why I say Maui is a resort town. Yeah. I always say this in all our yeah. Podcast. It, it is. If you want to just stay in a resort, Maui's a good spot for you. Yeah, you don't need to rent a car. That's what I mean. So, you, you know, I mean, that would be the only other place that I would say don't rent a car. Yeah. But I think, you know, part of the experience with Hawaii is to, you know, get out and enjoy yourself and of explore. Course. That's and go that, to local places, yeah. you know. Um, if you're staying in Hilo or Kona, definitely you need, you're going to need a car. Yeah, yeah. Everything's far. Everything is far. Yeah. So getting around the islands is pretty easy, I would say. It's pretty convenient, yeah. you know. If you do rent a car or you are going to be uh, getting uh, tours, it's you're going to be easily to get around. Um, one thing that I do want to mention, though, is that – Parking is always a factor, and parking yeah. in Oahu is crazy. Do you guys do you guys uh, do packages? Yeah, yeah, we do. No, packages. for parking, never do includes hotels? parking. No, never they don't. Inclu- right? No, I don't know if it, you know why because these hotels are farming out to other companies. Yeah, and a lot of the hotels too. If you look at Waikiki, there's not a lot of parking. No, so it gets expensive. Yeah, that's a tough one for Waikiki for sure. But just remember, you ain't going to get Gilligan's Island. You you need a car. <laughs> you need a car. You know what I mean? It ain't small. It ain't small. So yeah. getting around the islands is pretty easy. There also are, there also is, up until recently, there was a ferry that would take you over to Lanai. And yeah. that is a fun thing to do, you know? Yeah, if you're staying on Maui, you should visit Lanai for sure. Yeah. And it's, um, it's like 35 bucks and it takes 45 minutes, but it's one of the most scenic things you'll ever do. Yep. You're almost 90% going to see dolphins. Right. If you go during whale season, which is November, January, February, March, you're going to see whales. Um, I, I highly recommend that trip for sure. Yeah. What's the name of that bay right there? In, Manele Bay. 
In Manelli Bay, and yes. isn't there another bay too? Hulapoi. Yeah, Hulapoi. Yeah, Manelli Bay. Isn't that where the spinner dolphins are too? Hundreds of them. I know. Every morning. I've seen them. Yeah, Amazing. that's where I grew up. It's it's it's. You awesome. got to do that. You yeah. have to do that. Yeah. It's got to be on your bucket list. So you know, keep all of this in mind when you're traveling between the islands or you're traveling two islands. About getting around, it's an important consideration when you're planning your Hawaii vacation. For sure. All right, kids. Hopefully this helps you out. Yeah. And you'll be here soon. Don't Check forget. out our deal of the day, hawaii-aloha.com forward slash promo. Yep. And check out our website, hawaii-aloha.com. Lots of information there, including some of our back episodes of our podcast. And you can just interact with us. You can also give us a call, you know. Yes. What's 800, the number? 800-843-8771. I'm probably going to answer the phone. Good I really you. like helping people. Thank there you go. Patients. Answer. Answer the phone. All right. Mahalo to the Star Advertiser and, of course, hawaii.com. All right. That'll do it. That'll wrap it up. I'll say aloha and mahalo. Ahui ho. Ahui ho.